before we get into today's episode, I just wanna let you guys know we are, I think about 24 hours until the limited edition plushie is no longer available for pre-sale. So this is the last call. If you wanna get this thing, you have got about 24 hours to do so. Make sure to click the link in the description box or go over to Makeship, go to live campaigns and snag yourself a pyramid plushie with a little teacup before time runs out. Let me ask you, Mr. Carlson, do you think we're honest with each other race to race? Oh, no, of course not. I mean, you know, everybody is terrified of, uh, of one thing. You know, whites are, of course, terrified of being called a racist. Blacks are uh, terrified of being belittled. Of course, I, I, I think we need actually probably less conversation about race. I think it might do us good were we to ignore the subject a little bit and treat each other as if there were no color boundary separating us. I think that might be helpful. I think we talk about it in some ways too much. Tucker Carlson started his career as a writer, but his true rise to fame came when he joined American television cable networks like CNN, MSNBC, and most recently, Fox News. His quick-witted, loud, and opinionated disposition quickly won the hearts of millions of viewers, and he has his own show on the Fox News channel since 2016. Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. The show has become the most popular on cable and boasts over 3 million concurrent viewers. Despite his outrageously high ratings on the Fox News channel, Tucker Carlson has been no stranger to public outrage throughout the years. Anybody who answers my trophy wife is my favorite possession is my hero. I don't care, I'm voting for the guy. Resulting in a loss of advertisers on multiple occasions and calls for him to be fired. His comments on immigration, white supremacy, COVID-19 and beyond have sparked outrage on both sides of politics and he shows no signs of slowing down. Hello and welcome to another episode of The Corporate Casket. I'm the Illuminati and today we will be talking about Tucker Carlson. He has not always been the massively successful cable television host that he is today and his rise to fame has been one full of controversial opinions and public outrage. As always, we're going to start today's episode with a little bit of background, so let's get into it. Tucker McNear Swanson Carlson was born in 1969. His parents were media executive Richard Dick Carlson and Lisa McNear Carlson. When Tucker was six years old, his mother left the family and never returned. Her sons never saw her again after she settled down in France and died a few years later. Tucker says his parents' separation was a quote, totally bizarre situation, which I never talk about because it was actually not really a part of my life, end quote. In 1976, Dick Carlson faced controversy after publicly outing tennis player Renee Richards as being transgender, as she recently had transitioned from male to female. And this is actually something we've talked about in a previous episode in the Dale Carr scam episode. As it was 1976, this did not actually cause the level of public outrage it would today, and Dick Carlson's career continued to grow. He was the director of Voice of America and is also the former CEO of the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. Richard remarried when Carlson was 10 years old to Patricia Swanson, an heiress of Swanson Frozen Dinners. Four years later, Carlson was sent to a boarding school in Rhode Island where he joined a debate society. His classmates reportedly found him to be a self-assured conservative who wasn't afraid to speak his mind. This is also where Tucker Carlson met his future wife, Susie Andrews, who was the daughter of the headmaster of the school. Both Andrews and Carlson went on to attend Trinity College. After Carlson graduated from Trinity College, which as just a fun little side note, he apparently only reportedly got into it because of his wife's connections. I just find that interesting. But anyway, afterwards, Tucker Carlson applied to work for the Central Intelligence Agency. When his application was denied, his father suggested he follow in his footsteps and try to get into journalism, stating they'll take anybody. And oh boy, did they. Carlson took his father's advice and began searching for a job in journalism. His career started off modest and his first job was as a fact checker for Policy Review, which is a bit ironic in hindsight, but we'll get into that. Here's what Tucker Carlson had to say about that job. He says, quote, I ended up working for this magazine because the standards are so low. Again, previous statement stands. Anyway, Carlson went on to write for several magazines and publications, including the New York Times and Esquire. He finally made a name for himself after interviewing and writing an article about George W. Bush in 1999. And the article was bizarre to say the least. And while he reportedly embellished a plethora of George W. Bush's quotes, other writers praised him for his impassioned writing and storytelling. The article included several quotes where George W. Bush said the F word. 
However, Karen Hughes, who was Bush's communication director at the time said, I don't remember those words being used. George W. Bush himself went on to comment that he found the language used in the article to be inappropriate. And another close friend to Bush said that the governor and presidential hopeful had stopped cursing while he was on the campaign trail, but used to curse a lot. The article contained discussions about George W. Bush's decision not to commute Carla Faye Tucker's death sentence in Texas, a power he had as governor of the state at the time. Carlson asked Bush if he had spoken with the people that protested the execution and wrote that Bush had responded with no, but he had watched her interview with Larry King. And upon being asked what she said in the interview, Carlson wrote Bush's response as, please Bush whimpers, his lips pursed in mock desperation, don't kill me. The article went on to say that Bush smirked while talking about the situation, which Karen Hughes says was a total misread and Bush found the decision not to commute Tucker's sentence a very difficult and very emotional decision. The two also reportedly had a conversation about what Bush was not good at, which he responded by saying, sitting down and reading a 500 page book on public policy or philosophy or something. According to George F. Will, the writer at the Baltimore Sun, Tucker Carlson was able to pry a more playful and naughty side out of the soon to be president and the un filtered article brought attention to a different side of Bush, not often seen by the public. Now, normally journalists are praised for their truthfulness and integrity to the interview, but Carlson seemed to gain praise for his embellishments of quotes and his integrity was never actually addressed. And that's something that would become a trademark in his career. Despite the praise Carlson received as a writer, he decided to make the switch from writing to television. According to him, he made the switch because he had financial demands stemming from his large family and needed to support his three kids. The money he received from writing was not enough to cover his expenses. He had some experience on television for quick appearances, but his big break in television came when CNN offered him a yearly contract. Tucker Carlson joined CNN as their youngest co-anchor in history and co-hosted The Spin Room and Crossfire in 2000. The Spin Room only lasted a short amount of time and was actually canceled in 2001, but Crossfire was highly successful until its cancellation in 2005. Crossfire was a nightly debate television program that originally aired on CNN in 1982. Tucker Carlson debated from the political right point of view. The show consisted of people from opposing sides, conservative and liberal, discussing, but really just arguing, current political issues. The show was wildly popular and was one of the first shows that featured opposing and explosive opinionated political commentary. In perhaps the most famous episode, Jon Stewart, who was the host of The Daily Show at the time, and Tucker Carlson went head to head in 2004. Instead of discussing political issues, the interview largely consisted of the two men discussing each other, which quickly turned into a flaming roast. The episode started routinely enough with them discussing the political race between George W. Bush and John Kerry. However, it quickly turned into a debate between Carlson and Stewart about their respective shows. John Stewart started the debate by saying that he intentionally made extra time to come on this show because he had discussed it with friends and also in occasional newspapers and television shows, mentioned this show as being bad. The two went on to grapple with Tucker Carlson, calling John Stewart boring and Stewart calling Carlson a hack. John Stewart went on to discuss his displeasure with Crossfire and the wasted opportunity for truthful and honest political debate, stating, you're doing theater when you should be doing debate, which would be great. It's not honest. What you do is not honest. What you do is partisan hackery. Despite a brief one minute time span where there were no insults, the interview ended with Tucker Carlson telling Stewart he was more fun on his own show and Stewart saying that Carlson was as big as a dick on your show as you are on any show. You're as big a dick on your show as you are on any show. (laughs) Clips of the interview spread like wildfire on the internet and quickly became one of the most viral, if not the most viral moments of the show. Despite this, the show's ratings quickly plummeted, maybe because viewers agreed that the show was partisan hackery and the show was canceled in 2005. Despite the show's cancellation, Carlson's career was just starting to grow and he quickly found a new gig as a host on MSNBC. In 2006, while he was hosting on MSNBC, Tucker Carlson joined the cast of the hit show Dancing with the Stars. Though he didn't get very far, it did gain him some additional notoriety. In 2009, Tucker Carlson joined Fox News after leaving MSNBC and made his first appearance on the show on his 40th birthday. Carlson said that MSNBC had become a different network since he joined and he was glad to be a part of the Fox family. One year later in 2010, he made a return to writing and editing when he released his online magazine entitled The Daily Caller. The Daily Caller was a conservative journal that reported on political news, but also had some interesting, and please by interesting, I mean offensive and sexist, pieces that had nothing to do with politics, including this charmer. And I quote, 
Jennifer Love Hewitt's Cleavage, A History. Groundbreaking work, as you can obviously tell. So this magazine was interesting, but apparently it was a hit in online conservative media at the time, but Carlson eventually sold his shares to the co-founder, Neil Patel, in 2020. In 2012, the magazine released a video of Barack Obama making a speech in 2007 in which he criticizes the response of the federal government during Hurricane Katrina. Hurricane Katrina hit the Gulf shores as a category five hurricane in August of 2005 and killed nearly 1800 people. It demolished multiple communities in New Orleans and devastated the city economically. Many people, including Barack Obama, have questioned the federal government's response to Hurricane Katrina as being slow and incredibly limited considering the amount of damage and havoc the storm had produced in the city. Upon the release of the video of then President Obama's speech, Carlson denounced the video in the Daily Caller and in particular criticized Obama's accent. Carlson said, quote, This is not the way Obama talks. At least it's not the way he's talked in the dozens, the scores of speeches I've watched him give or public appearances I've seen him make. This is a put on, this is phony. That is issue one, end quote. He also found an issue with what he considered to be the message of the video saying, quote, the second issue is he's telling a predominantly black audience something very clear. The federal government doesn't like you because you are black. Carlson said that the tone of the video, that the federal government treated Katrina in a different manner than previous natural disasters in other areas because of the racial demographics within New Orleans was divisive and untrue. Fox News and Tucker Carlson treated the release of this video as a bombshell for the Obama administration. The accusations that President Obama was purposely trying to turn black Americans against white Americans were respected by multiple Fox News reporters. Despite Fox News reporters claiming that this was a bombshell of a video for the Obama administration, this news cycle didn't last long. Perhaps the backlash was limited because of a wide range of Americans that are in agreement that the federal government did indeed treat Katrina survivors differently, perhaps because they were black, including a very famous Kanye West quote who famously said, George Bush doesn't care about black people. Regardless of the reason, Carlson did not get the response he anticipated from the public after the release of that video. Carlson's true rise to fame largely came in 2016 when his continuous commentary on the Donald Trump political campaign gained him significant notoriety. In 2016, Tucker Carlson wrote an article for Politico magazine about Donald Trump and his less than normal campaign strategy. One of the first few lines in the article includes a quote from Donald Trump after Carlson had said something about his hair a few years prior. And this is the quote from then candidate Donald Trump. It's true you have better hair than I do, but I get more pussy than you do." End quote. The 45th president of the United States, ladies and gentlemen. Oh boy. Anyway, in the article, Carlson goes on to discuss how there's never been anyone as unpopular as Trump. He says that at the time, Donald Trump was hated by Republicans more than Democrats, but Republicans were to blame for his rise to power. Additionally, he credits Donald Trump's ability to say what he really thinks as a key aspect to his political rise. In this, he mentions Trump's proposed ban on Muslim immigration and states that it's not as extreme as it sounds because as millions of Muslim people move to Western Europe, a sizable number of them haven't assimilated. That's a quote. Meaning a ban on Muslim people was an acceptable ideal to Carlson because Muslims had not shed their cultural traditions or religion to fit in with Western culture. When this article was released, it was widely thought that Donald Trump had virtually no chance to win the presidency. But Tucker Carlson was one of the few that suggested he actually did have a chance, gaining him immediate notoriety with Donald Trump himself and his supporters. As we all know now, Donald Trump did in fact win and Tucker Carlson continued to show his support throughout his whole presidency. 2016 was also the year that Tucker Carlson would get his own show on the Fox News Network. The show Tucker Carlson Tonight is roughly an hour every night that contains Carlson's commentary on current political news, his opinions on political speeches, and has been chock full of controversial takes. Tucker Carlson's show has lost Fox News many advertisers throughout its five years of existence. And before we get into all of the outrage that Tucker Carlson has sparked, let's take a moment to thank today's sponsors that we do have for this episode. We all know the absolute pain of dealing with endless fine print contracts from your wireless providers. There's so many charges and so many mystery fees and just so much that just doesn't quite add up, except you know that the bill's always gonna be crazy expensive. So when you hear that Mint Mobile offers premium wireless service that starts at just 15 bucks a month, it sounds like there's a catch, right? 
Well, it turns out there isn't. Their secret sauce is that they sell online only and just cut out brick and mortar stores. So less overhead for them means more savings for you. And I love them. I've had them for over a year. I have bought a phone for my sister as well. And the service is fantastic. They're easy to use, it's easy to pay every month. And I know what I'm gonna be paying every month. There's no surprises ever. And I love that. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, make sure you go to mintmobile.com slash casket. That's mintmobile.com slash casket. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash casket. A new year means lots of habit changes. And whether you're saving money with less takeout, learning how to cook or getting healthy, HelloFresh is here to help. HelloFresh offers pre-portioned fresh ingredients directly to your door. So you get convenience and quality. HelloFresh cuts back on time spent in the kitchen so you can spend it with your other resolutions and meals are ready in about 30 minutes or less. Plus quick and easy meals, including 20 minute recipes and low prep and easy cleanup options provide an even faster route to putting food on the table. I am a massive fan of their one pan meals, of their one skillet meals, of their easy sandwiches and soups and all of that. It's just, it's too easy. And the menu is always changing so I never get bored. And if you want something after dinner, you can satisfy your sweet tooth with seasonal limited time goodies like Dunkaroo's cookie dough or vanilla delight cheesecake. So if you wanna get started, make sure you go to hellofresh.com slash casket16 and use code casket16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. That's up to 16 free meals and three free gifts at hellofresh.com slash casket16 and use code casket16. In 2018, Tucker Carlson made comments on his show regarding immigrants and the current state of immigration in the United States. He started his monologue by saying that, quote, few advocates, if any, argue the economic merit of immigration, end quote. This is factually untrue. Many advocates do argue about the economic merit of immigration and multiple studies have found that immigration and the presence of immigrant workers and students have a positive impact on the American economy. Carlson goes on to say, quote, we have a moral obligation to admit the world's poor, they tell us even if it makes our own country poorer and dirtier and more divided. Immigration is a form of atonement, end quote. He continued on to say, they're nice people, nobody doubts that, before later going against that statement and recounting a story that caravan leaders had been demanding $50,000 from the United States government and calling them cynical shakedown artists. When his monologue concluded, it was followed by an advertisement from Pacific Life, an insurance company. Pacific Life quickly followed up with a statement stating, our customer base and our workforce reflect the diversity of our great nation, something we take great pride in. The company went on to say in their statement that they would no longer be advertising on the show. The long monologue regarding immigration by Carlson came at a time in the United States where a seven-year-old girl had just died in the custody of US border agents from exhaustion and dehydration. And at this time, the country was widely split about this proposed wall by then President Donald Trump and reports that children were being held in cages at the border without food, water, and beds. So it's not surprising that his comments did not go over well with Pacific Life and of course, some of the general public. Tucker Carlson again prompted heated discussions in August, 2019, after a shooting in El Paso, Texas left 22 people dead and over a dozen people injured. It was the biggest mass shooting targeted against Hispanic people in American history. After the deadly shooting occurred, investigators found a white supremacist manifesto written by a perpetrator that discussed a Hispanic invasion happening in Texas that needed to be stopped. In his monologue following the event, Tucker Carlson compared the concept and the very real threat of white supremacy to a Russian hoax and called it a conspiracy theory that Democrats were using to divide the country. Carlson stated, quote, "'If you were to assemble a list, a hierarchy of concerns of problems this country faces, where would white supremacy be on the list? Right up there with Russia, probably. It's actually not a real problem in America. Carlson's comments were made at a time in America where hate crimes and hate groups were both on the rise. According to the Southern Poverty Law Center, the number of hate groups in the United States had risen by 7% to 1,020 in 2018, and white nationalist groups had risen an astounding 50% to 148 that year. As you may suspect, comments that white supremacy is a hoax during a time where both hate crimes and hate groups were on the rise in the United States were met with near immediate outrage. The hashtag fire Tucker Carlson was almost instantly trending on Twitter and a Fox News anchor, Shepard Smith, contradicted Carlson's comments by saying, white nationalism is without question a very serious problem in America. Another Fox contributor, Mo Elithi tweeted, you know who else believes white supremacy is not a real problem? White supremacists. 
In the following segment, Amid the Controversy, Carlson said that racism is one of America's problems, but supporters of President Trump were all being labeled as white supremacists, which was divisive and distracting to the other issues in the country. Oddly enough, he also announced in the same segment that he was taking a vacation and heading to the wilderness. The vacation had reportedly been planned for a considerable amount of time, but the timing was most certainly suspect. He came under fire again in June, 2020, after he made comments during the international protests resulting from the murder of George Floyd by a former cop, Derek Chauvin, who has now been sentenced to 22 and a half years in prison. Within his monologue about the Black Lives Matter protests in Minneapolis, he criticizes multiple politicians, calls Black Lives Matter a political organization, and discussed his apparent outrage about the idea to defund the police multiple times. At the first mention of the defund the police movement, he states, Now, the first thing you notice about this idea is how unpopular with the public it is. Almost nobody in the country supports it. He continues on to show a clip from CNN with the president of the Minneapolis City Council, Lisa Bender, and says in that clip that, Bender explains that the desire for safety, the desire not to, for example, have your home invaded by violent criminals, is in fact a sign of racism. Again, it's not what she actually said. What she actually said was, For those of us for whom the system is working, I think we need to step back and imagine what it would feel like to already live in that reality where calling the police may mean more harm is done. She never said calling the police is racist as Carlson suggests. She called for people to acknowledge the privilege they have and to call the police when their safety is in danger and not worry that calling the police may put them in more danger as many black folks and other people of color have to worry about. As the episode continues, Carlson goes on to say that Democrats are going after the police because they cannot control them and effectively want to alter the system to replace Trump supporters. At the end of the monologue, Carlson finishes up by saying, quote, "'This may be a lot of things, this moment we're living through, but it is definitely not about black lives. And remember that when they come for you, and at this rate, they will.'" According to Fox, when Carlson said they, he was referring to Democrats, not the protesters, but the damage was already done. In a rapid response, Walt Disney Company, Papa John's, Poshmark, and T-Mobile all announced they would no longer be running advertisements with Tucker Carlson tonight. Mike Sievert, who is T-Mobile's chief executive, tweeted, bye-bye Tucker Carlson. Papa John's released a statement that they were going to stop spending money on advertisements during opinion shows, stating that placement of advertising is not intended to be an endorsement of any specific programming or commentary. Poshmark's chief marketing officer released a statement that said, we do not agree with the comment he made on his show and stand in solidarity with those who seek to advance racial justice and equality. In their statement, they said they were no longer advertising on the show. Despite Poshmark, Walt Disney Company, Papa John's, and T-Mobile pulling their advertisement from the Tucker Carlson show, the company's actually continued to advertise on Fox shows with the advertisers and their departures not actually having caused the network to suffer a financial hit. They just simply moved their money to a different show. So just FYI. Poshmark is just kind of the weird one. That one just stands out to me. I don't know why. Anyway, the announcement of advertisers leaving the show sparked a hashtag campaign on Twitter, hashtag I stand with Tucker. While supporters use the hashtag to stand up for the Fox News host, his opponents use the same hashtag to lobby tweets and insult him and the Fox News network in general. While Tucker Carlson faced the loss of advertisers and sparked repeated instances of public outrage, it continued to grow and became one of the highest rated programs on cable television. In 2021, Tucker Carlson had roughly 3.2 concurrent million viewers with 514,000 of them being in the widely coveted age bracket of 25 to 54 years old. Due to his widespread monetary success, Carlson gained access to two other programs, including Tucker Carlson Originals, which is on Fox News platform, Fox Nation, and a podcast called Tucker Carlson Today. One of the first big stories released on Carlson's show, Tucker Carlson Originals, was a documentary titled Patriot Purge, detailing the events of and Carlson's opinions of the January 6th insurrection. On January 6th, thousands of Donald Trump supporters went to the United States Capitol building during the meeting to confirm Joe Biden's election as president. What started out as a protest to stop the steal quickly turned into chaos as people stormed the building and gained entry, halting the proceedings and causing mass chaos that led to the death of five people, including one police officer. The first episode of the docuseries came with the warning from Carlson in which he said, "'They've begun to fight a new enemy in a new war on terror.'" Not, you should understand, a metaphorical war, but an actual war. Soldiers and paramilitary agencies hunting down American citizens, purging them from society, and throwing some of them into solitary confinement. 
Carlson met for this warning to be directed towards people who had participated in the events of January 6th and went on to say that the event was being used as a pretext to strip millions of Americans, disfavored Americans, of their core constitutional rights. According to politifact.com, the estimated number of people who entered the Capitol was roughly 2,000 to 2,500 people. However, the Justice Department has arrested about 650 people, a far cry from the millions of people Carlson suggested would be persecuted due to the event. The documentary also included viewpoints from other writers and journalists. Blaze TV writer Elijah Schaefer said the crowd was mom and dads who were mad about what they saw to be an election that they thought was unfair, rigged, fortified, and stolen. According to court filings and reports from those who had been arrested, the people involved were not merely mom and dad, but instead many of the people and organizers of the Capitol riot were from militia groups like the Proud Boys and Oath Keepers. A study done by the Chicago Project on security and threats found that of the people arrested, there were 89 people who were members of extremist groups or militias, including 42 Proud Boys, 23 Oath Keepers, and 16 Three Percenters. Carlson's docuseries also recited the long running myth that members of Antifa were changing clothes in the crowd and instigating the riot. There are more conspiracy theories or just factually incorrect claims in the docuseries, but if we go through all of them, we would be here all day. The most important thing to point out is that the docuseries resulted in massive outrage from both sides of the political debate and even resulted in two Fox News contributors quitting. Two commentators that have a long-term history with Fox News, Stephen Hayes and Jonah Goldberg, resigned from the channel after the release of the January 6th documentary. Hayes was quoted as saying that it was irresponsible to put that into the public airwaves. He went on to say, quote, "'The trailer for the series basically gave people the impression that the US government was coming after all patriots, half of the country, in the word of one of the protagonists in the piece, and that the federal government was going to be using the tools and tactics that it used to go after Al Qaeda. And that's not happening, that's not true," end quote. And his concerns are definitely valid. According to Fox News Channel, the two commentators had been talking about leaving the channel and voicing concerns about misleading misinformation being perpetuated on the network before the release of the Patriot Purge. So this event was merely the straw that broke the camel's back. Tucker Carlson stood by the docuseries and when he was asked to comment about the two commentators leaving, he said it would substantially improve the channel. Even though the docuseries cost Fox News two longtime commentators and led to widespread outrage, it remains on both Tucker Carlson's website and Fox Nation. A few weeks later, Carlson released a groundbreaking episode with the first full-length media interview of Kyle Rittenhouse. Kyle Rittenhouse is an 18-year-old who had shot and killed two people and injured one during a Black Lives Matter protest in 2020. On November 19th, he was acquitted on all criminal charges by a jury after a highly watched trial that sparked massive national debate over gun control, racism, violence, and vigilantism. About a week later, Rittenhouse sat down for a friendly interview with Tucker Carlson. Carlson described Rittenhouse as a working class kid who sincerely believes in America. His community falls apart and he tries his best to do the right thing at a time when almost nobody else in the community is trying to do the right thing, but he does. In the interview, Rittenhouse states that he's not a racist person and that he supports the Black Lives Matter movement. He said his case was not a matter of race, but a matter of self-defense. Carlson continued to praise him throughout the interview. Fox News came out and said that Kyle Rittenhouse and his family were not paid for the interview and were also not compensated for the forthcoming episode of Kyle Rittenhouse trial, which includes background footage from the teenager's trial. Tucker Carlson has also made repetitive, misleading claims about COVID-19 throughout 2021, including one bizarre statement he made on his show, Tucker Carlson Today, that COVID-19 feminizes people. In an interview with United Kingdom politician, Nigel Farage, in which they were discussing UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson's health, Carlson said, quote, So somebody who knows him told me, and I, I was initially getting your take on this, that getting COVID emasculated him. It changed him, it, we, it feminized him, it weakened him as a man. But the virus itself, this is true, does tend to take away the life force in some people, I notice. I mean, it does yes. feminize people. I, I'm, no one ever says that, but it, it's true. Fox News later pointed out a study that had been published in Italy that said 50% of 121 men who recovered from COVID-19 had lower testosterone levels. However, another study that was published in China said there was insufficient evidence to substantiate those claims. So while yes, Carlson may have been referring to these reports when he said COVID-19 feminizes people, he never quoted them in his show. And he also seemingly likened feminization to weakness that accompanies COVID-19 symptoms. 
Despite the multiple allegations that Tucker Carlson spreads misinformation and his repetitive use of divisive and frankly insulting language, he remains one of the highest paid and most watched people on cable television. Despite the loss of advertisers throughout the years, he makes the Fox News Channel more money than anyone else and his brand just continues to grow. It's hard to believe that there will ever be a time when Tucker Carlson will leave Fox News or be forced to leave. So in the meantime, we'll just wait and see what outrageous thing he says next because there's certainly no shortage. But with all of that being said, that's where we're going to end today's episode of The Corporate Casket. Now, I know there's probably a few people in the YouTube comment section for those of you watching this in video format instead of the podcast version that are most certainly leaving comments that I may have left out X, Y, Z category, this niche topic, this one thing, this, that, and the other thing. The catalog of Tucker Carlson isms and situations is so vast, so immense, so depth, it would be insanity to try and cover it in one video. And I don't actually believe that's quite possible. So I may not have shown the specific or most recent or whatever thing it is that particularly outraged you that he said, but the point here is that his outrage spans a broad scope. And I wanted to talk about a little bit about his history, where he came up, how he came up, and then get into some of the more recent controversies. But when I say there are plenty of controversies surrounding this guy, it is an endless bountiful supply of bullshit. So with that being said, I hope you did learn something new today. And if you did, make sure to like, follow, subscribe so that you can stay up to date on all the latest episodes. I appreciate you spending some time here with me today. And if you wanna connect with me outside of these episodes, make sure you click on my Linktree link in the description box so that you can always catch up with me on social media, other projects that I'm involved in, all that good stuff. Thank you again for hanging out with me today and I will see you in the next episode. Bye. 